we have to be intentional about the programs that we create and that we provide. Um, in Charlotte, you know, for a while we lived in the 28208 zip code. And if you're familiar with the area, it's still one of the most impacted um, zip codes by the digital divide, right? Um, and, you know, there's also research that shows if you were born and or lived in that area, um, you're born into poverty and that you won't get out, right? Uh, my story is different, right? Like I've gone, I worked at Apple in California, like I've gone to NC State, right? Like I have this narrative that I'm able to tell and it's because of the intentional programming that I was able to experience uh, both in middle and in high school, right? And I think um, a lot of the work that I do um, in my research now is around intersectionality. And I think we have to think about the entire experience of a student and not just group them, you know, by gender and or by race, right? We have to be very intentional. And that's what we do at Intec. Um, you know, we're not exclusive in our programming, but we're very intentional with uh, recruiting and getting Black and Latina girls and our staff and our speakers, right? Because now they're able to see, right, that that representation is very important. Um, but even when we think about now, right, a lot of students are at home. Um, Charlotte, for instance, they're raising $3 million to get Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, and because there's a shortage, students can't get online. They can't get on their Zoom for school. Um, and I think that's an issue that should be escalated at the state level. Um, and, you know, students should be able to have these. I feel like internet now is like a basic need, um, especially with the, the pandemic. And we have to be very intentional with making sure students have um, access to, to what they need and it can't fall on the families.